Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take the stock portfolio that we built in our Microsoft Excel portfolio video, which gets automatic updated prices from the internet, and we're going to pull that data into Access using a linked table and show up-to-date information in Access. Today's question comes from Spencer in Las Vegas, Nevada, one of my Platinum members. Spencer says, I watched your stock portfolio for Excel video last night. Very informative and helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any way I can pull that data into Access? I know how to import Excel files into Access, but the names of the stock are missing, and I get a ton of blank lines and garbage where the calculations are. Help. Uh, I'm sorry, that's help. <laughs> yes, yeah, Spencer, let me show you how this will work when you pull this data into Access. Of course, prerequisite, folks, if you haven't watched the Excel stock portfolio video yet, go watch it because I'm going to use that same sheet in this video. I think this is the first time an Access Tech Help has had an Excel Tech Help as the prerequisite. But anyways, go watch that first so you understand what, what's going on here. I'll put a link down below in the link section. Go find it. Go on. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet as I left it at the end of the extended cut for the members. I basically added some conditional formatting, these data bars here, and uh, this button here, which we can click on to refresh. Let's see how the stocks are doing. Okay, about the same. Now, what I'm going to do is, instead of importing this sheet into Access, which is a one-time deal, I'm going to link Access to my Excel sheet. I'm going to create an active link. What that means is, anytime this sheet is updated, then it updates in Access automatically. That's the difference between importing and linking. Now, if you've never done this stuff before, importing and linking between Excel and Access, I cover this in my Access Expert Level 20 class. I cover importing data from Excel, linking live to the Excel spreadsheet data, and so on. All right, so that's Access Expert Level 20. I'll put a link down below in case you want to learn more. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. You can uh, grab a copy if you want to, or you can just use a blank database. It doesn't matter for this example. Let's go ahead and link to that Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to go to External Data, and then under Imported Link, click New Data Source, From File, Excel. All right, we're going to browse to where our spreadsheet file is. I have mine sitting on my desktop, so go to Desktop, and I just saw it. Where is it? Right there, stockportfolio.xlsm. It's M because there's a macro in it. I created a macro to make that button where I can refresh the stock data in the extended cut. But yours might be XLSX. All right, hit open. Then come down here and click on link to the data source by creating a linked table. This will make a table over here that will connect right to that Excel sheet. So anytime you update the sheet, it updates in Access automatically. Hit OK. OK, now. First thing you'll notice, the stock name is missing. So we'll have to address that in just a minute. That's one of those active data fields in Excel, which doesn't import into Access. Okay. Then we got some blank rows, and then we got these calculations. Everything from 7 down really isn't Access friendly. So we'll have to see how to make Access ignore that in just a minute. But let's finish this up. We're going to redo it in a second. Sheet 1 is fine because we're going to delete it. I just want to see what you get if you just do this. Ready? Open it up, and there you go. Okay, these rows down here aren't friendly for a database. The stock name is missing, so I got no idea which stock is what. All right, and that's easy. That's just a formatting problem. We can fix that later, too. That's just it's a really small gain. All right, so let's fix this. First, let's put the stock name and the ticker in the data so we know what we're dealing with. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so close that. Save changes. No, let's delete this sheet. Right-click, delete. We'll do it again. Where is it? Delete. Okay, let's go back over to Excel. Okay, now how can I put the name of the company and the ticker in the sheet? Well, let's go over to the end over here. Click over here. Hit this guy, right? And let's find name. Right there, name. Boom, it adds it as a field. Now that will import with our data into Access. All right, and one more, let's find the ticker. Ticker symbol, boom. There you go. All right. Save your sheet. I just saved it. Let's go back over to Access and do this import one more time. All right, here we are. Ready? External data, important link. 
All right, new data source from file, Excel, browse, there it is, open, link, OK. All right, now, doesn't look very much, but watch this. Scroll over to the right. Look at that. There's the name. I know it's not coming in right, but it's it's there. Okay. Sometimes scrolling it leaves artifacts on the screen. That was kind of weird. Watch. I don't know if it's my video recording software or whatever, but the data is there if you do that. Okay. But now we at least have this data in our table. All right. So we can ignore this. All right. Let's just continue on. I'll show you how to fix this stuff. Ready? Next. All right. Let's give it a good name. Let's call this my stock portfolio T. All right. Finish linking. Okay. Open it up. There we go. We got the name and the ticker symbol. That's all good. Okay. Now, let's fix the rest of it. Let's, first of all, ignore stock name. We don't need to see that. We're going to have to fix some of these table names or the field names because shares space owned. I don't like that. I don't like anything in Access where there's spaces in my names. This change percentage, that's not good. Name isn't good. It's a reserved word. So let's go fix those field names too. And we'll ignore any row where there isn't a ticker symbol. So it'll just ignore all the stuff on the bottom because, again, we can redo these calculations on our own. So how do we do all this? We do it with a query. So close this. Save changes. Sure, whatever. Create. Query design. Bring in your stock portfolio T. It's under links. All right. Now let's do some work here. Now let's make this bigger. Let's bring in the ticker symbol, the name, and then I want the amount invested shares owned, the price, and the change. Value profit gain I can calculate here in Access. Okay, but let's fix these names first. I, I don't like ticker symbol because it's got a space in it. So ticker, colon, and that will make an alias. I don't like name, so let's call this stock name, colon. All right, invested is fine. Shares owned. Now you could go and fix these in Excel. But the point is, I'm trying to show you how, if you're linking to someone else's sheet, for example, and you can't control that, all right, or you've got that sheet set up perfectly, you don't want to change it, right? Shares owned, colon, all right, price is fine, and then change. I'm going to call this percent change, like that. All right, let's save this as my stock portfolio queue, and let's see what it looks like now. Okay, much, much better. All right, our field names are access friendly. We are seeing just the data I want up here. Let's get rid of the stuff down here that we don't want. All right, anything where the ticker symbol is null. So come over here and say criteria is not null. Right there. Now when I run it, look at that. That's nice and sharp. Okay, save it. Let's put our calculations in here now. All right, let's come over here. Our value, right, is going to be the shares owned. So shares owned times the price, which I'm calling just price. All right, run it now. There's our value. Okay. Now you could try formatting that as currency in the properties for that field. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a calculated field that doesn't work and you have to use a function. Let's see. Okay, it works in this case. All right, and you could format like percent change we could format this as a percent properties, format, percent, maybe two decimal places, save it. All right, I cover all this in my Access Beginner class, by the way, this formatting stuff. All right, let's do profit. Come out over here. Profit is going to be the value minus the amount that we were invested. So what did I call it? Just invested? Yeah. All right, right click, properties, format, currency, save. If it doesn't work, by the way, some queries it won't work if the query is calculated. Um, you can do use the format function, format as currency. I covered that in one of my other videos. All right, there's our profit. And one more, we can add our gain. What are the, what's the other gain over here? The other one is percent change. Okay, so we'll call this one gain. And that is our profit divided by our amount invested and that is going to be a percentage so right click properties format as a percentage and we'll make let's see here yeah that's good close that 
save it and run it. And there we go. Perfect. Now let's say the information is updated in Excel. All right, so let's take AMD for example. Right now the price is 113.45. Let me close this. Let's go back over here to AMD, refresh the data. All right, went down to 112 something. All right, that's good. You got to save this sheet. Okay, it's saved. Now if you go back over to access and open up your portfolio queue, all right, look at that. AMD went down to 112. The key is you have to make sure that you update it in Excel and save it. Is there a way to have Access automatically update the Excel spreadsheet? Yes, there certainly is, but it involves some VBA coding because you have to actually have Access open up that Excel spreadsheet in the background, do a refresh, and then reload this query. And I will show how to do that in the extended cut for the members. In addition, we'll pull this data into a form, add the conditional formatting like we had in the spreadsheet, Put the calculations down below, and I'll make you a timer so you can just have it sit there open, and every maybe 5, 10 minutes or whatever you want, it'll refresh the data in Access. All right, we'll do that in the extended cut. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for the members, it's almost an hour long. I had a lot of fun with this one. This was a lot of fun recording. We'll use VBA to update the pricing. So we'll make a button here that says Refresh the Stock Data. All right. It'll actually open up a little updater form. What this entails is we actually have to load a copy of Excel in the background. The user doesn't see it, but it all happens in VBA. We load a copy of Excel, right? It opens up the sheet, refreshes it with that macro, okay? Closes Excel and then updates the stock portfolio data in Access. It's really pretty cool. Then we'll do an auto update Right down here, you check this box on, and this form will refresh itself at whatever interval you want to specify. I did five seconds for class, just so you could see it working. But you could set it to once an hour, or once every 15 minutes, whatever you want. Right? It'll update and then refresh, and you can see what you're, what's going on throughout the day as you got this open. Then we'll do some conditional formatting. All the same stuff we did in Excel, we'll just do it in Access, including the data bars, like these guys here. Okay. Then I'll make you a button to open up your Excel sheet if you want to make any changes over there. You just click on this. This will shut, and it'll open up the Excel spreadsheet for you. And you can make changes, add stuff, whatever. All right, that's all covered in the extended cut. This video alone, if you're into stocks, this video alone is worth the cost of membership. Right? It's, it's cheap. Silver membership is cheap. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one. All of them. There's, what, 100 and some of them. Well, close to 200 by now. All right. If you're into access, you're silly not to become a member. You see all the stuff on my YouTube channel. Come on, what are you waiting for? <laughs> and of course, gold members can download a copy of this database. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? 
Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.